So today we're going to use the FEMA Attack Environment Manual to give us a couple of pictorial references on how to survive nuclear war and atomic blast. We're going to concentrate on what it's going to take for you to survive in your house from blast overpressure. So this first panel here it has blast injury thresholds in the open. So if you're in the open, when you have a 500 kiloton airburst, this is what's going to happen. And what's important here is you see that dashed line, that's the 50% lethal exposure. And you can see with a 500 kiloton airburst, that's a little bit over two miles. So if you're in the open, and you're less than two miles from that detonation point, you're going to be killed by several effects. Now, what we're looking at here is at the one PSI overpressure we talked about, you're going to have a lot of skin lacerations from glass fragments. You're also going to have a lot of, of the debris that's laying around that is going to be impacting people. Then you move up to 2.3 PSI overpressure, you're going to have impacts that fracture the skull, in serious glass wounds. Once we get up to 3.3 PSI, you're going to have a lot of lethal impacts from ground debris that's pretty heavy. So that could be trash cans, pieces of housing, anything. And then interestingly, at 5 PSI, you're going to have eardrum failure. At 15 PSI, you have lung damage. And Lethal overpressure, you got to remember, half people are going to die at 10 PSI. So this is an important table. I would go ahead and do a screen capture and print a copy of that. Don't listen to any of the fools out there. Duck and cover works. Because remember, most nuclear detonations, the way people are killed are flying debris, exposure to the thermal pulse, and getting blinded by the light. So duck and cover way cuts down on the amount of casualties. Don't listen to the fools. This is panel 12. This is one of the most important panels you can see. And it stresses why it's important to do two things. One is to reinforce the floor joists of your home. The second one is to take cover in the corners of the basement. When we look at this, you can see in the 1 to 2 PSI range on unreinforced homes, the home structure can be demolished partway and you're safe in the basement. When we get to the 2 to 5 PSI range, you can see that the home will be wrecked and part of the debris will be in the basement. But what's been found from actual experience is in nuclear tests and artillery tests is the corners of the basement will have voids where you can survive. So what you're learning from here is you need to be able to get yourself out of the shelter. So you're going to need tools to extract yourself if the home collapses. The next one is showing the shock wave moving at over 5 PSI. And what happens here is it pushes the building off and over what this frame is showing is the shielding effect of having buildings adjacent to each other. So when you look at the top part of the frame, you have a multi-story steel frame building. And when it collapses, the collapsed material is actually going to go further in a nuclear attack than it would in a hurricane. In a hurricane, most debris are found near the building site. In nuclear warfare, you can see here that a lot of the debris in the building in front from the attack direction gets pushed into the building behind it. Same thing here at the bottom, and it's showing the direction of attack. Now what you need to expect in a nuclear attack is debris will be pushed much further than they will in a hurricane. This is panel 26 from chapter 2. What this is showing you is in a factory setting or in a home setting, if you put what you need to survive in the basement area or a dugout area, and then you put a dirt berm around the building, that will help you survive because that will do two things. It'll cut down the radiation load from fallout, 
but it'll also help remove the effect of some of the shock from the overpressure. Now this is a very important panel and what it's showing you is damage to vehicles and whether they're inoperable. Now what you need to remember is these vehicles that were actually used in atmospheric nuclear tests had points and condensers in them or they were straight diesel where you didn't have electronic ignition and computers in them. But what's important here is if you look at the ranges of PSI overpressure, cars, automobiles, buses, trains, locomotives, they can still be used after enduring substantial overpressures. And you'll look at the right, they will be damaged and turned over, but still operable. And in the nuclear test, what they did in the videos is they showed you where they turned the vehicles back over. They let the oil and fuel settle in them and they restarted the vehicles and they drove them around and used them. So that's important. At a 5 PSI overpressure, a lot of vehicles will still be usable, but you'll have to turn them back over.